Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where I'm coming at you guys with another list today, and this is an updated list. This is my first ever updated list of a previous list I've made. So one of the first lists, it, it may have been the first list. I have to go back and look at my uh, my uploading history. But last year, I made a video called Top 10 Fifth Pocket Knives of All Time, Top 10 Best, something like that. Um, and it was the first video I posted that kind of blew up. I mean, I had thousands of views pretty quickly on it. I was so happy. I, I gained subscribers. It was, it was really, I kind of considered it a turning point in my channel. Just a really, really fun time. And since then, one thing that through my channel and through my, you know, my experience with different knives and, and knife laws and uses of knives, all sorts of things, one thing has definitely changed in my preference of a knife. And that is that I've really come to love smaller knives as well as big knives. When I first started, I always, you know, 3.5, 3.75 inch blade. That's all I want. I'm to the point now to where, you know, great knives come in all sizes. And some of my favorite knives have become fifth pocket knives that I can carry with another big knife. You know, two is one and one is none, guys. So we're going to hit on that. And there's been some pretty big changes to this list. There's four new knives, a bunch of random different positionings, and there are also maybe five knives. I'm going to let you guys decide on number 10 because I'm really stuck here. I have good reasons for each one, <clears throat> and we'll get to that here in just a second. As for this list, there's no real rules. It's 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 just knives that I love as fifth pocket knives. However, I do consider um, all the regular factors from aesthetics, ergos, quality, action, how they carry in the fifth pocket, the value of the knife, and price in general. I mean, there's value and then there's price. They're, those are two different things um, to take into consideration. So that's what I'm factoring. I've talked enough. These knives, if they're available on Amazon, they will be listed in the description below. Um, click on the link, pick one up for yourself, guys. Some great, great knives on this list. I also have some honorable mentions that we'll get to here in just a second, but I really think this is the best list of fifth pocket knives out there on YouTube. Don't mean to sound arrogant. I just, I really like what I've got here. A lot of them are available. A lot of them are affordable and they just fit really good in that fifth pocket. So let's get into it. Let's start with honorable mentions and we're going to kick this one off with a Kubi. The Kubi KU203. Um, this guy is coming in in the range of $38 to $41, depending on what color G10 you get. Absolutely fantastic action. If you guys aren't uh, familiar with Kubi, you should get to be, because they make some great knives. N not as well known as the Civivis and CJRBs of the world, but... I mean, look at that. You, you, it's it's fantastic action. Extremely solid build. This guy, the G10 is thick. This isn't a light knife. I don't have the exact weight. It's not heavy. I mean, it's it's a little heavier than you would think it'd be for such a small knife. But it is just, it is a super solid build. Built like a tank. Like I said, you got the great action. The one thing that I would do to this knife, and the biggest reason why this knife is not in the top 10, is this guy right here, this glass breaker really unnecessary um it, it serves a purpose if you ever have to use it but I, I i just don't think i will especially for a fifth pocket knife um what i'm going to do with this guy is actually um take a dremel and just cut this thing off cut it off right here um because then it, two things that it does it, it sticks up more out of the pocket when you have it in the fifth pocket and it also can kind of poke poking you if you bend over or put enough pressure on it that won't feel very good sticking into your uh into your gut me personally got a little extra padding around the middle so i don't feel it quite as much there but there's even been a couple times where it's poked me so not very good there i'm gonna take that off and i think this would make a fantastic fifth pocket knife the kubi ku203 <clears throat> next up we have a little cold steel. This guy here is the cold steel mini tough light coming in at $27.99. Super, super cheap, small, simple, cheap, and easy to close. And let me show you guys what I mean when I say easy to close. So you got it here and all you have to do is just, just like that. And you don't have to worry about it hitting your finger. You know why? Because when you hold it right here and you press down, Regardless of how hard you flip, it's going to stop right here. Absolutely impossible to hit your fingers. Always handle a knife with care and safety, guys. But, I mean, 
I'm not hitting my finger here. And I can do this all day without worrying about it hit my finger. So that's pretty catchy. Nice little trick there. It also fits extremely well in your fifth pocket. Very small. One of the smallest knives you're going to see on this video. The only reason it got knocked out of the top 10 was it, it, it's just, it is a really short blade. I mean, we're talking just a little over an inch. It's a very versatile Warncliffe. It works well to cut letters and packages and in little, pa you know, little, uh, bags of chips, whatever you use it for. Um, it's, you know, I, I just, I prefer the other top 10 knives over this one, but it's still worth mentioning because it's a super great value, nice little blade, and it can uh, withstand a lot of use. The Cold Steel Mini Tough Light. They also make a regular Tough Light that's a little longer, not mini, um, also worth looking at as well. Uh, next up, I have this guy right here. This is a Finch. And this is the Finch model 1929. Now, the thing with this guy, the the only reason, and I mean the only reason it fell out of my top 10, because this was in my top 10 last time as well, um, I, I like this more as a primary carry. It's a, it's a small knife that works absolutely fantastic as a primary carry, because that blade is just super versatile, really nice and sharp, action's great. Um, it I just prefer it as a fifth. Or, or as a primary, and I'll just, uh, you know, kind of a gentleman's primary carry. Really, really like this knife, but it does fit in the fifth pocket, so it could be a fifth pocket knife. I like enough. I figured I really should still list it on this video. Um, like I said, timeless, classy look, great action. You got that finch grip where you can move up and got jimping that'll really secure the knife. There's no jimping here, but the jimping down here really allows you to give it that good. I call it the finch, the finch pinch grip because uh, a lot of his knives have this. It was the first knife I noticed it on, and I like it a whole lot. So giving Finch a little bit of extra props here. Check out Finch, guys. They got a lot of awesome things coming up pretty soon here. Um, this is one of them, though. He keeps coming out with different models of this from different handle materials, and some of them look really sweet. This one's just carbon fiber. Really love this guy a lot. That's the Finch Model 1929. Now we're getting into just about the top 10 where I'm gonna let you guys decide because I'm really I'm really torn on this, super torn on this actually. I've went back and forth a couple times and I thought, you know what? This is one I'm just gonna let the viewers decide. So here are your two options for number 10. One will be an honorable mention, the other one's obviously gonna be number 10. The Kaiser Mini Sheepdog. Now, a lot of people are saying, why are you even questioning leaving this out of the top 10? Well, for a couple of reasons. One, this is a, a relatively bigger knife when it comes to fifth pocket knives. Um, it definitely takes up every inch of your fifth pocket if your fifth pocket's big enough for it to fit in. Sometimes the fifth pocket size will vary a little and you'll have to really squeeze it in there. I have some jeans that hold it pretty well. I have other jeans that it doesn't fit in very well. So it's very borderline. I think it works just as great as a primary carry as I thought with the Finch. So it could definitely be a fine primary carry, which kind of pulls it away from the fifth pocket carry. Um, I also, the, the liner lock here is really annoying. You really have to uh, uh, dig in there to access access the liner lock to close the blade. So not the best thing in the world there, but it's still a fantastic knife with killer ergos and it, it, killer action too. The action is fantastic on this thing. You want to talk about a big blade, you can just push button. Yeah, the Kaiser Mini Sheepdog is definitely that. So this is a great knife. It's coming in right around, where did we have that here? That was coming in at $69. So a lot of good things to go with this, with the exception of the liner lock and the fact that I think it makes just as good of a primary carry. So here's one option for number 10. And here's my other option. And this one, this one may throw a few people off, but I really have come to like this knife. I almost, almost love it because it's so different. The Kaiser Cyberblade. Yes, the Kaiser Cyberblade. Now, a couple things real quick. This guy comes in at a price of anywhere from $89 to $159. This model here was $159. The only reason I have it is I did not pay $159 for it. I got in on the Kickstarter for it where I only paid like $57 or $67, some weird number like that. But for S35VN and Titanium, I thought that was definitely worth it, so I got it. So I didn't pay that. I'm not recommending this version for you guys. They have a Micarta version that has M390 in Micarta. That one's $89. That's available at Blade HQ. It's available, I believe, on Amazon. It'll be linked below if it is. It's available just about everywhere. 
And that I do like, I would recommend that. It's just very, very different. It's a cool little like, conversation piece. It's a very versatile blade as well. You can use the tip of the Tonto, or the, the extra point on the Tonto just as well as the tip on the Tonto, the top of the blade. So very, very versatile points. This also would make a great knife to do any type of scraping if you have something stuck to something. So it's, it's really good at that. And the blade itself is slicey enough to cut through anything really. I mean, come on, it's, it's not a slicing beast. I mean, look at the, the, the cutting geometry on this is not the best. Got a pretty thick blade. But again, this is one that you could really put some hard use on. As you can see, I've, I've carried it quite a bit, got some scrapes on it and wear marks. It's held up really, really well. So I do really like this knife. I'm just not sure if, if it should be 10. If I had to pick right now, I think I would put this guy at number 10, but it has another issue that you just saw right there. Sometimes you, you gotta get used to deploying this thumb hole. You can easily deploy it with your thumb on the thumb blade, now, or the thumb stud. That works fine. Kicks right out, and it's, it's, it's really easy to open with a thumb stud. No issue there. And once you get it down, you have to hold it just right and flip out. It, there. It, it, it does work. And once, like I said, once you get it down and you find the rhythm, it's pretty easy. But I just, I like the uniqueness of it. I like the versatility of the blade. So, personally, if I had to do it right now, I would put this at number 10. Uh, simply based off uniqueness and versatility. But let me know, guys. This one's up to you. Which one is number 10 on the list, the Mini Sheepdog or the Kaiser Cyberblade? You decide. They're both going to be linked in the description below. Um, let me know there. Really interested to hear your thoughts on that. Next up, now we're getting in to number 9. We are officially in the list. And number 9 is none other than the Microtech Exoset. Now, this guy was higher on the list on the first one. The reason it fell back is it really works just as good as a money clip as a primary fifth pocket. I really wanted to put emphasis in this video on these knives being the best fifth pocket knife to go in your fifth pocket. So since this has another use, such as a money clip, I moved it back a little. Um, it's coming in at 250 bucks, so it's not cheap, but you get that top-notch quality from Microtech. Um, aerospace tolerances, premium materials, fantastic action. The action on this guy, it's one of the most fidgety uh, Microtechs I've ever handled. I mean, just watch. Yeah, you see that? It, it's great. It really is a super fun Microtech. Very slicey blade, a lot slicier than most dagger blades because it's so wide and it's such a thin stock to begin with. This is a nice, really, really nice little blade. So would definitely recommend checking this out. Comes in premium 204 piece steel, but that's always changing. You guys know how Microtech works their steels. They, they're constantly working on a rotation there. Um, but this is a great one. And if you put it in your fifth pocket, it covers up a lot of this money clip area. So you stick it in here and instead of having all this sticking out of your primary pocket, you know, you're only seeing like this much. So it's, it, if not less than that, regardless, it takes a lot of this out of the view. So it doesn't look too bad. And it's just a great knife to always have on you. Fun, fidgety, and very, very effective for any cutting task. So this is a great one, the Microtech Exoset. Number eight, we got a Protec, and this one took quite a fall too. This is the Protec Sprint. Now, the reason this guy fell, in all honesty, this is more of just a personal preference for me. I've kind of gotten a little away from push button automatics. Don't get me wrong, they're great. And for some people that may have arthritis or, you know, issues with their hands, these are excellent knives. They're their go-to. So um, not knocking them. I just, I, I personally like manual deployment a little more than automatic. So, so I pushed this down the list a little, but nonetheless, this is still a fully American made knife for $110. Now, not this version. This version was a little more because it has the mother of pearl inlay and the coated blade, rose gold coated blade. Um, but just the regular version with S35 VN steel, um, black aluminum and a, and, a, and a regular push button, you're talking 110 bucks. So it's, it's really not that bad at all. It's one of the small knives in the video super 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 snappy protec action it, 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 everything about it really is great for such a small knife you also get a really good grip i got three fingers my my ring finger is fully wrapped around this with my middle and index 
Um, very, very effective little ergos on this guy. You wouldn't expect it by looking at it, but it really does feel decent in the hands and it has a very nice blade to work with. So again, I, I couldn't, there's no way I could have ticked this off the list because I just love ProTech and I love this knife in general too much. And it just, it fits, it, 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 it fits the role too well to not have it on this list. The ProTech Sprint, a fantastic little push button auto from ProTech. Check it out if you want a small little nice snappy fifth pocket auto. Coming in at number seven, we have the Damn Designs Oni. This is another one. I, I'm still not sure if this belongs at seven or six on the list. I was really stuck at this area. I wasn't sure where, whether to put it here or in the next spot. You'll see the next spot in just a second, obviously, but very fun little knife to middle finger flick when I'm not doing it under a camera and constantly screwing things up. But there you go, works really well. Um, the front flipping action is fantastic. Nice little acoustics from that titanium frame. S35 VN steel. And another one with surprisingly great ergos. It's two and a half fingers, but you got that excellent spot to put your thumb. If you really wanted to, you could choke up. <clears throat> As always, though, just be careful. You're not touching the blade. But it really does feel good in this position. I'm actually, I usually like to choke up on my knives, but this is one knife where I just really like it in this position right here. And it's just a fun little fidget knife, guys. Again, it's a pretty versatile tip. Um, you can also use, again, the point of the Tonto there for uh, other types of draw cuts and whatnot. Um, Nice little wicked swedge. This is just a really cool knife. You know, if you guys are carrying a primary knife, sometimes you can just have a little fun with your fifth pocket knife. Get a different blade shape. Get a design that's really out there that you think is just cool. And the damn designs Oni really is a great one. Nice pocket clip that brings it really, really deep into the pocket so you don't see much sticking out. Just a lot of reasons to really like this knife. Not super heavy. I would say the weight is very average for a knife this size. And the fact that I can middle finger flick this is really really cool so like this knife a whole lot like damn designs in general they have some pretty darn cool designs definitely worth checking them out this is the damn designs oni now coming in at number six guys again let me know if the oni should be here but right now at number six i have a new one this is the boker stubby quaken and the biggest reason Two biggest reasons that I put this one at number six is, again, a little more personal reasons. I, this is one just due to the aesthetics and, and uh, you know, the carbon fiber and the appearance of it. It's one that I think would, would match better with a lot of the clothes I wear on a daily basis. It's a really cool little gentleman's carry. Um, and the blade for me, even though I really had to get used to this tip being so far back and, you know, parallel with the spine, this straight back blade here, um, I really do like this blade shape. I prefer this blade shape over the Damn Designs Tonto. That's the only thing. Um, it's, it's, it's just a little more convenient for this size of knife and the typical task I would be using this knife on compared to the Oni. I get a little more use out of the blade personally, but they're both sweet looking knives. This knife right here looks fantastic. If you like the Quaken design, you're going to like this design. It is fancy, flashy, fun, great steel with some S35 VN steel, and that blade just rockets out of there. Such a cool little knife. Really cool. Happy that Blade HQ made this run. This is a Blade HQ exclusive, guys. You can only get this at Blade HQ. So if you want one, there are some still in stock. I don't know if this version with uh, the carbon fiber and titanium is available. They have a bunch of other versions, though, in all titanium. I believe in all carbon fiber and all micarta. I think they even got more of the copper in micarta or brass in micarta versions in. So go check out. See what they got left in stock. This is a really cool, fun little knife, though, that carries excellent in the fifth pocket, nice and deep with the recessed clip and recessed screws. Uh, Boker and Blade HQ did a lot of really good things with this model, and I'm really happy they uh, they brought it brought it brought it to uh, to life because before you couldn't even this was not a thing. This is a brand new uh, Quaken version, so really, really like this a lot. The Boker Stubby Quaken, gotta remember the Stubby Quaken, really, really cool design. So let me know, guys. Oni or, or Stubby Quaken at number six. Uh, number five. Number five is another new one on the list, and this is one of my... Oh, I love this knife. The Kaiser Lieb. First of all, this guy... Oh, real quick. Sorry. The pricing on the Stubby Quaken is anywhere from $89 to 
89 to $99 on Blade HQ for this knife. Sorry about that. Now, back to the lead. The price on this guy, $55. $55. And for $55, you get really nice micarta, a nice little accent of a blue pivot collar, N690 steel. Uh, decent little clip. Uh, it's actually ergonomically a great clip and a super, super slicey blade. This blade is a little laser beam. As far as just actual sliciness, this may be, probably is the best knife on the list for pure sliciness. Uh, really, really good. Fantastic action. Another one. The blade just rockets out. It really is so, so good. Gives you really good ergos. You can get a nice, solid three-finger grip. And the micarta provides a lot of grippiness to the handle. Just a really, really good one. I really struggled at putting this at number five. But I, I do I do like the other four just a little more. Just a little more. It's really close. But the Kaiser Lieb is an absolutely fantastic option. If you guys are looking for a nice, really slicey little blade at and, and a pretty affordable value of 55 bucks. Look no further than the Kaiser Lieb, guys. It really is a great one. I love this knife so much. Uh, I do carry this one a lot, and it works great for me. That's the Kaiser Lieb. Now, number four. Number four is a little surprising because I had it farther back on the list. But another thing I wanted to do on this list, guys, was not put um, material material, not necessarily quality, but materials used on the knife, I didn't want to make that a priority because these are, you know, these are secondary knives. You're not primarily using them. So I went more off just action, aesthetics, blade shape, stuff like that. And that did push the CRKT Pilar farther up on the list because it, ergonomically speaking, this is one of the best there's probably two other ones that are right up there with this guy as far as ergos the ergos are just perfect on this guy they are absolutely amazing your index finger buries into that finger choil your other three fingers get a nice full purchase the handle disappears in your hand and all you have left is a very nice effective sheep's foot blade to take care of darn near any little cutting task you need there are some drawbacks with this guy, though. You're getting 8CR13 MOV steel, so not a very good steel. Barely adequate. Um, it is easy to sharpen, but, you know, as far as edge retention and corrosion resistance, it's it's not really that good, especially edge retention. Edge retention is, is pretty weak on 8CR, but, again, it is it is a somewhat of a softer steel, so it is easier to resharpen as compared to... Um, you know, harder steels that will give you a longer edge life. So definitely something worth considering, especially as a fifth pocket knife. You may not be using this as much, so maybe you can get away with 8CR. Um, I actually put a custom scale on this. It was only 25 bucks. So I was like, I love the Pilar enough. I love my Vox designs enough to get this custom scale. So again, though, this guy is only coming in at $29.95 for the, for the standard base model. So $29.95 plus another $25, you're still only looking, you know, at a $55 knife. So yeah, I, I'm okay with that. I, I am. I would love to see a premium version of this with like S35 or M390 and, you know, maybe titanium or micarta or carbon fiber or something like that would be awesome. And that would be worth every penny of a, you know, 125 150 bucks. I, I would be fine paying that for something like this because I just love this design so much. The ergos are second to none. The ergos are just so damn good. I like it that much, and I do think it's fine at number four. I think a lot of people would agree with me on that. Let me know. Um, I'm not overhyping the Pilar, am I? I mean, for um, yeah, for nylon washers, guys, this is just nylon washers. It kicks out very well, has a nice robust frame. As you can see, it's just a stainless steel frame. It's not titanium, but it's a very strong frame. Nice, it, it, it's, it's a thick layer of stainless steel, if nothing else. So you got a lot of good rigidity there and it's just gonna hold up really well. I love this knife. Absolutely think it belongs at number four, the CRKT Pillar. Next up, we have a Spider Co, but a different Spider Co. Not one that was on the last list, but I've since then I have actually got one. I love it. The Spider Co Little Native. It's probably not a surprise to many people. 
This is, again, this is another one with the Ergos that it rivals the Pilar. I don't know if it's better than the Pilar because they're both so good. It's hard for me to pick one. I don't think I could pick one ergonomically because I love them both equally. But what this does have that I like a lot more is that right there, that compression lock. It makes operating this knife so much easier. I mean, a, a frame lock really isn't hard to operate, but let's be real, a compression lock is funner. It's a little more fidgety. So you do add a fidget factor. You can also just slow roll this guy out just fine. Love the spidey hole. The spidey hole and the compression lock is really what pushed this ahead of a lot of other knives. Um, I also love the jimping right here. The jimping is very, very nice by the compression lock. It's it's flush with the with the handle, but when you hold it and push in, you really feel it. It's 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 awesome how effective this jimping is when you can't even see it. You just put your thumb there and you have got some really, really good traction. That's a really awesome little detail they added that I think goes overlooked by a lot of people. Excellent little place to put your thumb. So you can really hold it back like this too, and it feels really good. And then that's even more effective. If you choke up, you got to, it, some people, it depends on, you know, how you position a knife in your hands. For me, I want to have my thumb a little farther up, but even then I still feel that jimping. I do think it's a little more effective when you have the tip of your thumb in it though. But regardless, excellent jimping, love the compression lock, love the ergos, great blade, Nice handle. This is a custom handle. These guys come in at $129.50 is the base model. But as you guys know, Spyderco has a blue million different variations of this knife with different handle material, different blade steels, different everything under the sun. So just find what floats your boat, what you like. And this is an excellent, excellent, excellent fifth pocket knife. The Spyderco Little Native coming in at number three. Now, number two... Number two, we got a Civivi. You guys probably knew this one was coming. This actually was not out when I did my first list, which is the only reason it wasn't on that list, but it's out now. It's here at number two, the Civivi Odium. This is such a sweet little knife. It's got those Ferrum Forge, Ferrum Forge Ergos. It almost disappears in your hand. Very discreet when in the hand. Super fidgety. It is an excellent knife. You can middle finger flick it. You can obviously thumb flip it just fine. It has that great Civivi action. Excellent jimping along the spine to give a little more traction in your hand, in your grip when you're holding it. It's just a really damn good knife. One of the best knives Civivi's ever made. I really love this knife. Um, this actual version is not available. I actually bought, I like this knife enough to where I bought two Civivi Odiums. Took them apart, made my own Frankenstein with the black blade and JG10. Um, and it's not that hard to do when these knives are only $52.70 for the base models. They come in a bunch of different colors and whatnot. So I thought, you know what? I'll, I'll buy two, put one together. And then I sold the other one for 50 bucks. So I only lost $2.70 out of the whole deal. So I'll take that all day to have a little bit of a more unique knife. And I, God, I just really, really like this knife. It, it really is so good. Um, it, it's great. It really is great. If you like Civivi, you already know what you're getting when it comes to quality and, and action with Civivi. But to have these Ergos in such a small package, it really is just a fantastic knife. And at $52.70, it's really hard to beat. Um, really, really good option. There was just one knife, one knife that beat the Civivi Odium, which was at number two. And that is number one being... The CJRB, my Leah. Did you guys, I mean, I tried, you guys. I really did. I took a lot of things into consideration. I tried to dethrone this knife here at number one, but it's just too hard to do for a lot of reasons. This guy right here, or girl, this is designed by the one and only Swags. Um, if you don't know about Swags, follow her on Instagram. Sharp and Pointy Swags is her Instagram name. And she designed this knife, and I don't think she could have done a better job. It really is, in my opinion, the ultimate fifth pocket knife. It carries great. It has really good ergos. Not the best ergos, but really good ergos for as small as it is. You know, you can hold it right here, and I feel totally safe holding it with my thumb, with my finger being that close to the blade. The swell of the handle really helps hug and push out to really get a good grasp with my lower fingers. 
and it is an unbelievable value. This knife is coming in at $34.95. So one of the cheapest knives on this list of, of all the knives that I had on this video today, this is one of the cheapest or, or, or the best value because there's nothing cheap about this. The quality is on point. It, you know, even the way it, the, the detent is, it gives you that nice glassy click of a detent. Uh, the lockup is fantastic. Everything about it, blade centering, on point, on point blade centering, no blade play. Love the front flipper tab. It's fantastic. The thumb studs are great for either spidey flicking or just thumb flicking. It it really is. If I had to pick one fifth pocket knife, guys, this would be it. I would love to see a more premium version with some carbon fiber and maybe some S35VN. That would be pretty sweet. Um, with like a bronze collar would really really like that a lot but even as is I love this knife it really is it's hard to beat really easy access to the liner lock it, it, it's just a home run it's a home run and it's going to take a lot to unseat this knife right here at number one this one is definitely linked below because it's available pretty much everywhere another knife that whenever someone gets it I've heard very very few people say they didn't like it it, it just works it just works as a fidget beast, as an excellent cutting tool, as anything you want it to be. The CJAB, CJRB Mylea is still number one on my list of best fifth pocket knives. Let me know what you guys think about this list. I really hope you enjoyed it. I had a blast making it and putting the list back together. Let me know where I went wrong and where I went right. I always love reading you guys' comments. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And until the next one, I'm out.